Cities in North America have been more open to building public transportation more now than ever before. With cities all across the continent having built out transit networks just within the past few decades, there are many other cities that have wanted to join in on providing public transit for their residents. There's just one problem, however, and that's money. The cost of building public transit in North America has been getting more expensive over the past few decades, and this is a massive problem for cities, especially cities with lower budgets that can't shell out the money for a comprehensive subway or light rail network. While many of these cities still do this, many other cities have looked into other solutions such as bus rapid transit. But not everyone likes to take the bus, and even BRT still has the stigmas associated with bus services. So is there any other way to get transit built for less and not have it be a bus? Well, many cities have been looking into a possible mode of transit that might actually be the solution to affordable transit in our cities. Aerial transportation has long been seen as the future solution to our transportation problems. After all, if you're stuck in gridlock on the ground, wouldn't it be a whole lot cooler if you could just go above it? Many existing transit lines already use elevated tracks to get over traffic and give our metros priority, but these metros are incredibly expensive to build, and most cities don't have the funding to build elevated metros. But most of these cities have the money to build aerial trams or gondolas. There's a good chance that you've probably seen or even been on on an aerial tram or gondola. There's quite a variety of these systems with some engineering differences, but in short, they are all aerial lifts that run along cables between two or more stations. Now, these kind of systems have quite a few different advantages that make them incredibly appealing for cities of all kinds to build. <laughs> For one, aerial lifts have the advantage of being incredibly space efficient. Their stations are small, and the footprint to build the cables is generally about the same size as building rail transit. Aerial lifts don't have to worry about elevation when it comes to building these systems either. Some of the first aerial lifts ever designed were quite literally made to endure the steep incline of mountainous regions, without having to deal with steep slopes that rail or cars would struggle with. You also can't forget the cool factor when it comes to these aerial lift systems either. They give you a great perspective of the city you're in, and they can also draw tourists to come and see some of your city's public transit system. But arguably the most appealing thing about aerial lifts is that they offer a non-bus transit solution at a considerably lower cost than rail transit. The average cost per mile of an aerial lift system such as an aerial tramway or aerial gondola in North America generally costs around 20 to 60 million dollars per mile to build. Now while this might sound expensive, this is considerably less than light rail lines and especially heavy rail metros in the US, which generally start around $150 million per mile to build. Cost per mile, aerial lifts compete more with bus rapid transit in terms of cost, and this gives them an extreme advantage and is really the main reason as to why many cities have seen them as a possible working alternative to other modes of rapid transit, as buses still have the stigma associated with them. So that's it, right? Aerial lifts are the future of transportation. Thanks for watching, thank you patrons, and I'll see y'all on the next one is what I would say if I was trying to sell you an aerial gondola. Because while these systems do have some advantages, they're not the perfect solution to all of our transportation problems. <laughs> Aerial trams do suffer from quite a few different issues. One of the main faults of the aerial tram systems is that they just aren't very fast. In general, the fastest aerial gondolas generally hit speeds of only about 15 to 20 miles per hour. This compared to even local bus routes with frequent stops is painfully slow for any transit system. But that's not the end of the problems that the aerial lift systems face. Probably the biggest issue that these systems deal with is their lack of capacity or the amount of people that these systems can move over time. This is generally measured in people that the system or mode can move per hour. For example, an average dedicated surface transit way can generally move anywhere from 10,000 to 25,000 people per hour. Now let's compare that to an aerial tramway or gondola system, which on average can move anywhere from 1,500 to 5,500 people per hour. Now while those might sound like big numbers, this is incredibly low for a transit system of any kind. These numbers are more on par with how many people a local bus route can move per hour, or in the worst case scenario, can even have lower throughput than just a standard two-lane road with only cars moving on it. Now does this mean that aerial gondolas and tramways are completely useless and that we should just shelve them away forever? Absolutely not. Aerial lift systems can be well implemented into city's transit networks and can really add to the multimodal transit network of a city. However, they tend to be a bit more limited in scope than some people might imagine. 
First, your aerial lift system cannot have incredibly high ridership. This sounds insanely counterintuitive, but since these aerial lift systems have lower throughput abilities and cannot scale up the same way that rail or bus systems could, it's most advisable that you're going to want to keep your system from being one that passes directly into the core of your city. Aerial lifts work better as feeder lines or radial lines that do not go through the center of your city. Secondly, we have terrain. For the most part, if the terrain along the route that you want to build your aerial lift system is flat, then it's most likely a better idea to consider a rail or bus rapid transit line as they will both be faster and easier to maintain within an existing network. However, if you're dealing with a major body of water or an especially steep elevation gain to the point where trains or buses might struggle to reach the top of the slope, then an aerial lift might actually be the best choice for your new transit line. In fact, many of the currently existing and successful aerial lift systems exist in cities with steep hills within them. While North America only has a couple aerial lift systems in cities, Central and South American cities have really taken advantage of the aerial gondola and tramway systems in order to better connect their cities, which are built on some incredibly rugged terrain. Mexico City and Bogota are both cities with aerial gondolas that act as feeder systems to their main transit systems, which connect gaps in the existing transit network over hilly, less densely populated areas of the metro network, and allows for these transit connections to be made without the need for costly infrastructure. While the US reserves most of its aerial tramways for more remote areas such as ski resorts, there are two aerial tramway systems within cities in the US. First we have the Roosevelt Island Tramway, which doesn't fit as well into this as Roosevelt Island is already served by the New York City subway and is more tourist oriented than actually being an actual transit service. But the US is home to another more fitting aerial tramway with the Portland Aerial Tramway. Its design is simple, a two station line connecting a major medical center at the top of a large hill to a new and growing neighborhood where many of the employees of the medical center live. The Portland Aerial Tramway in turn fits as the perfect need for an aerial tram as it moves people up steep terrain to a singular destination that will generate ridership, it won't generate enough to overload the aerial tram's capacity. Aerial lift systems aren't inherently a gadget bond. That being said, the way that many are touting them as the future of moving massive amounts of people through our cities sure does feel that way. Aerial lift systems like gondolas and tramways do have a future in a lot of American cities. Cities like Pittsburgh or Los Angeles that are built into incredibly hilly regions, with some destinations in the hills come to mind. But we have a tendency in North America, and especially in the US, to see one type of transit mode and think that it's some end-all be-all solution and that we won't need any other type of transportation mode within our cities. And we have to get into the mindset of building our cities to be multimodal, and that involves choosing the right tool for the right job. Will an aerial lift system be a good solution in some use cases? Absolutely. But will it be good in every use case? Definitely not. We need public transit now more than ever, and even though it might be expensive to build the right mode for a system right now, it's definitely better than going with the cheaper option and regretting it later. Much of this hype around aerial gondolas comes from its low cost, and as appealing as that can be, we have to understand the mode's limitations. Cities are going to have to make a choice eventually, and while I can definitely see some use cases for aerial lifts, they're still going to remain very niche. But if we do decide to build out aerial tramways and gondolas, hopefully we can build them in the right use cases and help our cities become better places to live. But would your city benefit from an aerial gondola or tram? Let me know in the comments below. I want to thank all of my patrons for their continued support, because without your support, videos like this wouldn't be possible. And if you want to support the channel and get extra benefits like your name in the credits, early access to videos, and extra content, the link is down below. Also down there you'll find links to my socials. I post extra content and updates there. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your support everyone. And as always, I'll see y'all on the next one.